This video is for people who uh, have a Calais or a Bellina or even just a VT Commodore, VX, whatever and want to change the factory head unit. Now there's something bad happened to this head unit, it stopped working, old, whatever. The battery's disconnected at the moment so I can, I'm not going to demo anything but this is just a video of how you can patch into the factory wiring. So I haven't mounted it, clearly it's just sitting there but this is how you patch into the factory wiring without having conversion stuff. If you take the standard stereo apart, it's all labelled on the boards. So basically what this is, I'm not really explaining myself very well. I'm doing it one-handed too, so. So this is basically the, the, the female part of the plugs out of the actual stereo itself. And this is all labelled on here, so if you're not sure of anything, you can just probe it out, so. And keep this damn camera still. This is how I did. All I did was scrape the tracks on the board, hit solder right to them, and make sure that there's no shorts. See, there is actually a decent amount of clearance, and this works just fine. I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could drill a hole in the board where the tracks are and do it better than that. But same with everything else. Like it tells you what speaker to put where. If I can keep this camera still. This camera's got CCD shift stabilization, but I think it's actually worse because it makes the shaking look worse than it is. But anyway, we've got accessories. Again, make sure there's no short. I know it's running close to the ground, but it's not as bad as it looks. This is how I did the, the rear speakers. So I've staggered them. I haven't just soldered next to each other. This works really well. I mean... You could go buy a solder mask pen with UV light curing if you wanted to make a better job of it. Now the antenna. Connect the remote wire from this aftermarket head unit. It's just to one of these tracks over here. And, and what it is, is it's the... Uh, i get this out of the way. Um, I think... Oh, jeez, I'm going to have to Google it, but I think it could be this wire here, the yellow with the red. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it works out to be... It works out to be this trace here, if I can get in close. You can see the trace runs over to that one there, so... It's, it's the, the pad that's right below the one that, that says FR, as in front right. Focus. Sorry about it being shaky, but it's very hard to not be shaky when you got one hand holding the camera. Need a cameraman. So anyway, this thing will mount right, right in there. Just The easiest way to make a bracket is just a piece of steel, sheet metal. And just steady it against the wheel, maybe. Piece of sheet metal that's higher or lower than the head unit, so bigger obviously. Then you can screw it to the side of this, whichever screws you're going to use, slide it in there, and then you can screw straight to the sides of this metal box. Just The only suggestion I can make, you can chop the board off. You, you don't need the whole board obviously, but just mount it in like a project box. And then to, to finish off this hole, rather than go and get a DIN, you know, storage compartment because I don't know I mean what the hell are you going to put in there anyway so I'm just going to allow this to be breathing room for the head unit and uh, all I'm going to do is is make a piece of timber I've got timber lying around nice hardwood I'll make up a, a nice panel there lacquer it I'll set it back so I'll basically use the router to do that maybe I'll do a video on it maybe I won't one thing to watch the factory speakers in the uh, premium sound system cars, that is Statesman, Bellina and Calais, are two ohms. So either you're going to have to replace all the speakers with aftermarket or get some heavy uh, wire around resistors that are two ohms and put them in series with the speakers because it's going to try and load up this uh, the output transistor unit or module I should say which is mounted about here on this, that's the heatsink for it. It's going to try and load that up too much. So it's a bit of a strange arrangement. Now in the factory stereo slash head unit, whatever you want to call it, it had two output transistor modules. 
So one was driving in two channels and the other was driving the others. Now the subwoofer amp in these things, where it sits, I'm gonna show you guys just cause someone's gonna ask or you can see this lock never gets used. Here we go. The amp is mounted straight behind here. So basically, you can see the screws for it. There's two there, two there. Yeah, I kind of butchered the screws a bit, but that's the amp for it. I don't see any sense in removing that. I mean, you could set the base flat. You know, here are the actual subwoofers themselves. One there, one there. Really, if you want a lot more base, just add an extra subwoofer. I would low side drive it, as in with RCA leads. These are, these are high side driven, which I don't know if this terminology is correct. I'm not into audio too much. I am, but not this kind of audio. So uh, what it's got at the moment, it, it's using the um, speaker outputs to drive the amp. So the amp has a high impedance side of it to, um, to pick that up. The amp has no gain controls, no nothing adjustable. It's all fixed, crossover, all that. So if you really hate the way the amp is set up, I suggest leave the amp and subwoofers that this car comes with and just add in extra, basically. It's, you know, like a 12 inch or two 10 inches or something. Something tasteful. And, uh, you know, actually do some research before you go setting the gain on your aftermarket amp because the way a lot of people set the gain is horrible. They don't know what the hell they're doing and they just it just sounds awful and damages the subwoofers themselves.